Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and last time we refuted the claim that the dogma of the assumption of Mary is ambiguous. This time, we'll look at another of the arguments put forth against this teaching to gauge its strength. This argument claims that Mary can't have been raised body and soul to heaven because of what Jesus said to Nicodemus in the Gospel of John. And no man hath ascended into heaven, but he that descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. John 3.13 Now the wise guy answer is to just say that Mary is not a man, and therefore this doesn't apply to her. But while that would definitely defeat the argument on an English language level, it doesn't explain what this verse means. After all, two episodes ago, we talked about Enoch and Elijah being raised up to heaven, and both of them were clearly men. It's also worth noting that Jesus said these words long before the assumption of Mary, or even his own crucifixion. And again, this can function just fine as a refutation of the argument, but Enoch and Elijah had been raised to heaven before this. So what is Jesus saying here? Well, first, what does the word ascension mean? The word ascension, as defined at Merriam-Webster, means the act or process of ascending. What Jesus is saying in this verse is that no man takes an action which causes him to ascend to heaven or begins any process which causes him to ascend. Indeed, in the cases of both Enoch and Elijah, we don't see any indication that either of them ascended by their own will or under their own power. Enoch is described as being taken, translated, or raised up by God, not by himself and Elijah was brought up to heaven by a whirlwind, not under his own power. This is the key distinction which makes sense of this verse. Jesus isn't saying that Enoch and Elijah weren't raised to heaven. At most, he's saying that only God can raise people to heaven, which is true. However, in reality, this verse may not even mean that. It could just mean that mortal men haven't been able to reach the highest heavens of God, and that through his death on the cross, he plans to change all that. This is supported by the fact that the very next thing that Jesus talks about after this, in verse 14, is how the Son of Man must be lifted up, so it's entirely possible that this verse might not even be relevant to the assumption of Mary at all. But suppose for the sake of argument that Jesus did mean for this to be taken in relation to all past and future ascensions into heaven. Well, that means that there is a stark difference between ascending under your own power into heaven and being assumed into heaven by God. Mary was mortal, she was assumed into heaven, she didn't ascend under her own power. Finally, she was assumed after Jesus' death on the cross had opened up the path to salvation for ordinary Christians, and she was both Christian and perfectly sinless. Based on all of this information and the previous assumptions of Enoch and Elijah, it's rational to suppose that Jesus' words to Nicodemus don't present any serious problems for the dogma of the assumption. There are lots of good reasons to think that this objection is just based on a misinterpretation of what John 3.13 means. Next time, what other kinds of arguments have people made against Mary's assumption into heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.